Today we have this KVM over IP from GL iNet called the Comat KVM. Now this device fits in the palm of your hand and using this device you can access the keyboard, mouse and video output of any computer remotely. Hence the device is called a KVM. It comes packed inside this box with the Comat KVM in this separate box. Along with this, you get an HDMI cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable. On opening the KVM box, this is how the device looks like. In terms of specs, it has a quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 CPU, a 1GB DDR3 RAM, a 8GB eMMC storage, a gigabit Ethernet port and supports 4K at 30 frames per second. It has a USB-C port to power the device, an Ethernet port, a USB-C port to connect to the target machine, an HDMI port, a USB 2.0 port to connect accessories like the ATX power board and then finally the hardware reset button to reset the device. Along with this, you get this USB-C cord and an Ethernet cable. Now I will be making use of my mini PC and use this KVM to access it remotely. Firstly, we connect the KVM to the router via this Ethernet cable, then we connect the HDMI cable to the KVM and the mini PC, then we connect the USB-C cable to the KVM and the mini PC, and finally we power the device using this USB-C power supply. Once it starts up, it shows this blue indicator which changes to blinking white while the device is connecting to the network and stabilizes to white indicator when the KVM is connected to the network and ready to be used. So now the device is connected to the network and then we can access the KVM using this glkvm.local URL. And here you will be presented for the first time with this admin screen password such that we can set an admin password for this. So let me go ahead and set a password here right now. And then you will get to see this first screen that is from right now from my mini PC right now. So now let's go ahead and look at the various settings that we have here. So if we go into the settings section, you have this video quality from our HDMI output. So right now it is set to ultra high, you can set it to high or medium based on how you want it. Then we can also change the orientation like for example you can change it to 90 degrees. Right now I'm going to change it back to 0 degrees. And then let's look at the EDID settings. So this is the output from my mini PC that we can support via this KVM. So right now we have here as 4K 60Hz. We are going to change it to right now 1080p at 60 hertz. This will allow us to see the screen much better and the output much better. Now this switch takes a little bit of time, say around like 4 to 5 seconds for the output to get adjusted and then you can see the output here. Now I'll just open this Firefox window right now just so that we can see the things properly. Now next if you see from the remote device settings, we have this audio option here. So I can actually listen to the audio output from my target machine on this machine via this KVM. So now let's go ahead and see if we can play a YouTube video and see what happens. So when I play this YouTube video, I can actually listen to the audio output from this video right now on my current machine that is using this audio option. You can always turn off this option from here also so like you can mute it here or you can turn it on. Now let's close this video right now and let's look at the other option. So we have this option to turn off the mouse as well as the keyboard integration. Then we also have this option to show the virtual keyboard. So with this I can actually type in things using this virtual keyboard and you can turn this option off whenever you want. Then we have this local cursor setting that is if I turn it off then I will not get to see the local cursor that is a cursor from this machine but only from the target machine. So once I come out from this window I will get to see my local cursor. Right now I am going to keep this on and then in the system settings we have this option to change the language. Right now there are only two languages here. I am going to select English and then we can change the color mode like we can set it to light or dark. And then finally we have this reset option. So with this reset option we can reset the entire KVM and set it up back again. Now the other way of resetting the KVM is by pressing this button here for nearly like 8 to 9 seconds and it will reset this KVM to factory settings. So with this let's go ahead and look at what we have in the toolbox section. So in the toolbox section we have this clipboard section wherein we can type something here and this will actually get pasted on the remote machine. So like right now I type this and this was pasted on the remote machine. Then we have these shortcuts. So we have quite some shortcuts that are present like for example control alt delete if I press that it actually invokes the logout option on my Ubuntu system. Then we have other shortcuts like alt f which will actually close the window on my target machine and there are a few more shortcuts that are available here. 
Then we have this Wake on LAN option. So Wake on LAN would work only if your target machine supports Wake on LAN option. So when I click on this option here, it will search for all the devices that are available on the network. And then we have to select the device that is our target machine right now. And then we are going to set it up here. So right now I know my target machine IP address is this. And this is selecting right now both these options here because my mini PC is connected via Wi-Fi as well as a LAN cable. So I'm going to click on apply and this device gets added here right now. Let's go ahead and test this option. So I'm going to turn off my machine right now. So right now my machine is off, but the screen is not updating here. Now let's go ahead and try waking it up. So I'm going to click on this and give it a few seconds. So my machine is actually on right now. We should soon see the boot screen. So right now with this, I can see my boot screen right now. And then if I press F2 here, I should be able to enter the BIOS. So with this, I'm able to actually access the UFI interface, not the BIOS. The BIOS is the old one and this is the UFI interface. And I can make some changes and also apply them. So let me actually exit this without making any changes right now. Next, we have this terminal access option. So using this option, we can access the internals of this KVM right now. So when I click on this, it opens up this terminal window and I can then see the various processes by running htop and it's a pure Linux system that we have inside and then we can actually access this internals of this KVM. So now let's close this and we are going to look at the other options. So in the accessory section right now, we have this ATX power board, which I've connected to the USB port of this KVM. So now there are other accessories available like the finger board, which is also provided by GL iNet. And right now I have connected this ATX power board to this KVM. And with this, we will be able to perform these operations. Like we can press the short power button, then long press the power button, as well as the restart button also. Next, let's go ahead and look at the virtual media section here. So with this option, we can then upload some file onto this KVM and then mount it on a target machine. So let's go ahead and upload a Debian image that I have here. So now I've seen that this upload takes some time, like the transfer speed is around like six to seven Mbps, even though this transfer is just between the local network. So this is something that I've noticed. So this will take some time. So let's wait for this thing to complete. So right now I have uploaded this Debian image here. And then when I go and hover over this, we get this two option that is file sharing and image mounting. Let's look at image mounting first. So once I click on that, we can select this Debian image and say mount. So now this will actually show up here as a CD-ROM drive here. So this was about now mounting the image on the target machine. Let's click on stop mount. And then after that, let's go to this file sharing option. So using this file sharing option, we get a drive called as GLKVM. And then we can access this drive, drop in some files here. And then we can access these files on our local machine via this virtual media here. So I can then stop here, this sharing. And then after that, I can download the file from this media right now. Now this was about the virtual media. Let's go to the app center. So in the app center, we have right now only one app that is Tailscale and Tailscale is a private VPN service through which we can access many devices on the same private network. And this is one of the app that is right now available. You can turn this on here and then afterwards we can bind this KVM to our Tailscale account. And then with this, we can then directly access the KVM over the internet. So this is one of the apps that is right now present here. Now, apart from these options that we have, we can completely use this full screen option wherein it turns the whole screen into the target machine screen. And then we can press escape to come out of this. Then we have this option to collapse the toolbar and then we can press here to actually view the toolbar here. Then finally, we have this option for cloud services through which we can remotely access this KVM using the cloud services provided by GLINet. Then we have for security, we can change the admin password here, as well as we can set a two-factor authentication code. Finally, we have this option to even reboot the KVM, and then we can also log out from this KVM by pressing this button here. So these are the various features that we get from this Comet KVM from GLINet. Now the entire software that is running on this Comet KVM is available on their GitHub link. So if you go to this GitHub link here, you get to see the source code that has been used on this KVM. So what I see here is that this project is a derivative project from the open source PyKVM. So PyKVM is yet another project that we have wherein you can use your Raspberry Pi as a KVM. So this project is a derivative project from the Spy KVM. And if you want, you can see the entire source code here. 
Now, one of the accessories that I have here is the ATX board to control the various physical buttons on the PC. This barebone board has a USB-C port to connect to the KVM device and it comes using this connector pins to connect the reset, power LEDs, HDD LEDs and the power switch pins on the motherboard. Currently, I could not show you these connections with my mini PC. Now, this device costs about $79, which is the pre-order price and if you decide to buy the ATX board bundle, it costs about $91. The pre-order will be delivered by this Meet Me. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about this device and if you want to know something more about it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as hit that like button for more such videos to come. You can also support this channel by buying me a coffee or supporting me via Patreon. Till then, I'll see you in my next one.